What's going on guys? It's Terrence from Two Fresh Fishing and Two Fresh Custom Baits with our second video from our series of custom bait creations. Today we will be tackling the Core Shot Two Color 5 inch Cinco using a Core Shot mold from Anglin AI which allows you to run a metal core line through the middle of your Cinco after you cut your tips off to allow your tips to adjoin from the top to the bottom. And what this does, guys, is this decreases, highly decreases the chances of getting a break off on your tips while you're fishing because your bonding is throughout the entire body of your bait. So we're gonna work on probably a, not a chartreuse, but I'm gonna be utilizing some maca powders today. So we're gonna do a, a pearlish yellow maca powder. And I think I'm going to go with a, a peach and a uh, dead on red blend. Probably add some flakes in the uh, yellow maca just to see how it comes out. We're still looking for this translucent body. So it'll allow us to be able to see our inner core line when we get ready to shoot. So, all right, let's go. All right, guys, so we're back. And the two color combination that we'll be using today will be the Maca Gold Pearl Powder with one of my favorite flakes, the .008 Lil Works Holographic Flake. And we're going to combine that with our core line or core shot, which is going to be a peachish pearl maca powder with a tad bit of the dead on red and we're going to for texture we're going to use the 0 0.035 black square flakes so we're not going for the regular chartreuse and mean green we're going to do something similar i just didn't want to make the same one over again so all right here we go all right, guys, so while we're cooking our plastic up, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys check out the mold for those of you who may have never seen it. Okay, this is an Anglin AI 5-inch core shot Senko stick bait mold. It comes with five metal inserts that are inserted into the cavity where your Senko is going to be shot and it runs from where your sprue well is here and it goes in through the cavity. And what this does is it is going to allow you or serve as your canal for running your core line down the middle and also for getting your tip done. So essentially what you're going to do is insert each one of these into the mold prior to shooting your primary color. So basically this is how it's going to look inside of your mold and you're going to close your mold up on it. Lock it in and you're going to go ahead and shoot your primary color, which is in our case going to be the Maca Yellow with the holographic flakes. You'll shoot that first, then you'll remove your rods. Uh, remember to make sure that if you're going to utilize this type of mold, that you oil your rods down prior to shooting. This will allow for better or easier removal once you've shot your first initial color. So after you've, you've done your first, you're going to remove the, uh, the metal rod out and it will allow you to have a cavity for you to shoot down your secondary color. You can then cut your tip areas off, reinsert your core color back in, and then go ahead and shoot your secondary color. So, all right, microwave's done and we're gonna check this right quick. Let me cut this fan on for some ventilation. I have my garage open. I'm gonna open a little bit more just to give me a little bit of better airflow. My fan's running right here, so I'm not going to put on the mask tonight. I have a good enough airflow, so I'm good to go. All right, guys, so 
we are done in the microwave and I just added about a 1 8 teaspoon of the Pro Maca. Just to give us a kind of a transparent color, but still have that yellowish kind of chartreuse look to it. With any powders, just make sure that you stir, stir, and continue to stir just to get a good blend of it in. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more in just so I can get a more of a deeper effect to it. So about another half of a 1 8 teaspoon. We're going to mix again. Pretty translucent. But you can see that pearlish look in it if the flash isn't too bright. Alright, so we are where we need to be on this. And now we're going to work on our secondary color. Alright guys, we are working with our second cup right now. And as I stated before, we're going to use the Peaches Pearl with a few drops of the dead on red I want this a lot more opaque or darker so I'm going to add about a little bit a smidge over an eighth of a teaspoon and we'll Get this mixed in and I didn't add my glitter or my flake to my other color yet I want to go ahead and wait till I reheat that the second time in order to do that but you can tell how that's thickening up so I want to get this powder stirred up just a little bit to go ahead and add in a few drops of the dead on red I've already shaken this up but I want to shake it up just a, a little bit more since it has been sitting and I'm going to do one two three four five six about six drops to start off with and then we'll mix this in starting to thicken up pretty nicely I think I'm gonna add about 10 more drops and 10 all right I want this red to be very very thick there we go see that this back in the microwave and get both of them up to temp and then we're going to go ahead and add the flake to it and then we'll be ready to go okay guys so we just got the red out and as I stated we are going to be using the Lil Works 0.35 black glitter so with this I'm going to add one fourth teaspoon which will be or two of the one eighths which should bring me to one fourth if i'm not right or if i'm not wrong so if i'm wrong somebody correct me so we're going to add that in and then we're going to add our salt and softener to the red since we are doing senkos and if you notice i am not downwind of this smoke so this is what we're looking like right here. I'm really liking this color. 
So we were about one eighth ounce of the, or teaspoon of the peach mica and about 12 drops of the dead on red colorant. And we're using a cup here, so we're gonna do one teaspoon of softener in this one. We'll mix that in and then we'll go ahead and do the other one and then we'll add the salt. I'm liking the violet hue that I'm getting from this as well. So here we go right here, if you can see good. All right, let's pop this back in. All right guys, so we have the yellow now and we should be back at temp, which is about 337 to 340. And what I wanna do now is just go ahead and drop in my Lulworks .008 holographic glitter. Let me take, make sure we don't have any black in this. And I'm going to just give a good smidge over 1 8 ounce. I want to make sure that it's in there, but I don't want it to be completely making it to where it's not really translucent anymore. So I'm going to do 1 8 ounce and then a smidge more. Get that blended up in there. My cup's not too hot, so I'm not really worried about the heat yet. Once I get ready to shoot, I'll definitely be putting on gloves. All right, so that's where we're at right here. And we're gonna go ahead and add the softener. And we're gonna do a teaspoon of softener for this one as well. Since we're going to be adding the salt in it, and I'll get that stirred in and get it back in the microwave with the red. Well, you know what? I'll go ahead and add the salt to this one now. All right, so we just have our Little Works Fine Salt, and we're going to be, since we're using a cup, I'm going to not fully salt it, but I'm also going to make sure that I'm stirring while I'm adding the salt in. And since we're going to be salting it, what I usually find is that once you add salt to it, it gives it bubbles. So after I heat it up again, I'm going to go ahead and drop it back in and take the air bubbles out. All right, so we're gonna pop this one back in and then we'll get the red out, add the salt to that. We're gonna go through the de-airing chamber again and we'll be ready to go, guys. All right, guys, so we just finished de-airing the yellow and we've gotten rid of almost all of the bubbles in it. I'm gonna check my temperature again. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and shoot this. And once we shoot this, we'll work on the red since we still have to shoot this with our core line installed and then take it out and cut the tips off. So we'll get all that taken care of now. And then we'll worry about the red later. So we now have our yellow with our halo glitter up to temp now. And we're going to proceed to shoot our first color for our mold. to hold the pressure on it 
for about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, give or take a couple of seconds on it. All right, and pop it out and top off the sprue and shoot the rest back in. So I'm going to give that a chance to cool off a little bit and I'm just going to monitor it just to make sure I don't have to top it off anymore. With this mold sometimes I find myself having to top off uh, another, an additional time just to make sure and I also find that I have to take the baits out of the mold prior to them cooling all the way down to lessen the possibility of getting dents in it. So I allow it to cool off enough for me to be able to take it out and still I'll say use gloves just to make sure that inside of the sprue if there's still any hot liquid you don't burn your hands. And we'll let this set up. Look at this color. It's a beautiful color. I love how the halo a holographic glitter makes it come alive all right so we're gonna go ahead and try this out and I didn't heat my molds up it's not that cool here so I'm not really worried about it being too cool but when I remove I try to remove it at an angle just to make sure that if is going to spit out anything that it's at an angle and it's not getting me all right so now you'll see all of your core lines here and you can just pull them out so what we'll do now is we'll just remove them and I can go ahead and take my gloves out We'll remove our core lines out. Still a little tough, but there we go. And I was going to re-lubricate it and I didn't, but you can see it coming through. It's not tearing the bit, which is good. And then I'm just sliding it off. And that's it. And there we go. Still soft but you can feel that hole from the tube that's in it and I'll go ahead and remove it just so I can show you how it looks it feels real hollow but you can see right there and it'll run all the way down alright so now what we need to do is we need to get the tips cut off and then we need to replace them back into their into the mold so we can go ahead and shoot the red on them. All right guys, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be removing the tip off so that we can switch the color to our red tip and I'm just going to simply remove it here, line it up with the next one using an X-Acto knife and I'm gonna roll my next one into place. Roll my next one into place and then roll my last one into place. Might not be a perfect alignment, but it'll be pretty darn close. So this is what I'm left with. And these now will go back into our mold. And that's V1. 
very simple to do. We're just aligning up with the middle groove where the O-ring would usually go to give me a alignment point and then we're just popping them back in. Fairly simple task and then I'm gonna let you see. So we, this one is a little bit longer but I'm not complaining about that. Alright so we're about to degas or de-air the red and then we're gonna go ahead and shoot the secondary color and then we can see how everything turns out. Alright guys, any of you guys that are using de-airing chambers, just make sure that you remember that your hot plastic is going to come up or rise a lot quicker than if you were de-airing cold plastic. So depending on how much plastic you have in, make sure that you keep an eye and be ready to adjust your pressure line here just in case it starts to run up or to prevent it from running over. So with my me only having a, a cup, I'm not at that point, but I'm still keeping an eye on it just to make sure. And once it hits this negative 30, I think it is, I think that's what it is. Can't see it. Yeah, the negative 30, I'll let it run for about another 15 to 20 seconds. Then I'll take the power, cut it off, and then I'll slowly let the air come back in. And also keep in mind that if you're using one of these chambers, that that air comes back in at a high rate of speed so if you and pressure so if you have your cup up under the knob or the um, the flow valve of the air it will definitely cause your plastic to spill or shoot all over the inside of your container so just be careful once you de-air your plastic remember that you're going to need to pop it back into the microwave to heat it back up because that airflow coming back in will cause it to cool off a lot quicker than if it was just sitting outside of the chamber. Okay guys, we have finally got the red out of the microwave and since we have salt in it, we do need to make sure that we stir it up so we can get it mixed up good prior to us shooting. And we're about at a 350 to 355 temp. I want to bring it up a little bit hotter than the 340 just to help with the bonding process. It's not going to take a lot of plastic on this run. And that's about it. So we're gonna hold that in. And being that your primary color is already in there, you really don't have to worry a lot about flashing. I mean, it can flash from the bottom, but I'd still add a little bit more pressure just to make sure I'm pushing it all the way down. And then I'm going to pop it off, top it off, and run it here. And I'm really, really, really liking this red color here. And I think that I'm going to shoot this in a couple of my love bugs or maybe on a crawl and try that out but we're going to let this cool down for a moment we shouldn't have to retop it off again and make sure that each time you use these you go back in and you re-oil them up again it will take the plastic will steal the oil from them when you're removing it so make sure that you go and lubricate it back up again all right so we should be good enough to remove now and all right let's see what we have guys oh yeah and watch your sprue to make sure that it's not still leaking look at that hell to the yeah I'm liking that and I'm going to remove because it's still liquid in here that could flow out I'm going to remove with my sprue opening facing up just to be 
on the safe side and look at this tell me that didn't come out good can you see that red down there bring you up a little bit see that came out pretty nice I'm loving the holographic flake we have no denting pretty solid shots on everything here and I'm really liking what I'm seeing here guys look at that we got a little bit of flashing around the bottom like I said you can get a little bit but you can break this off but pretty much I think we did a real good job no air bubbles beautiful color solid texture very flexible that salt is definitely going to help it do sinking and I think we did real good here all right all right guys so I decided to go ahead and shoot at least one batch of the red one because it's a cool color and two I just wanted to give a contrast between the two We're going to do a red as well. I just feel like that red is going to be a real sick color. I'm really liking the texture that the flakes are adding as well. All right, let's get it topped off. I'm not going to do the halo with the yellow just for saving time and then I'll let you guys see it and we'll come back with the color comparison alright guys so here we are this red is really looking like watermelon to me and I'm really liking how it looks look at that can see the pinkish hue to it and it really is just reminding me with these black fake uh, flakes the inside of a watermelon and that is freaking awesome look at that all right guys we are done and here is the result of our little experiment today using the core shot for the stick baits and I think we did a pretty good job so here's the red on its own and as I said before it reminds me of a watermelon so I'm really liking that but I am highly impressed with the way that this came out on our first attempt at using this color and you guys drop me a comment below and let me know what you think about the video I really thank you guys for taking the time to watch the video. Uh, I apologize in advance for the length of the video, but this is a process. And as we, as bait makers know, we run by the plastic. The plastic does not run by us. Uh, you got to excuse me for my, my, my baby stains. I had a, a six month old that I'm tending to and he doesn't allow me to stay in tip top shape all the time. So guys, if you like what you're seeing, give me a shout out and let me know. Let me know if there's something that you'd like me to try doing and I'll try my best to get to it. And again, drop a shout out below. Let me know what you think about the baits and I'll see you next time guys. And remember life is too fresh to not go fishing. So grab somebody, take them out and help them create a too fresh experience. Peace.